Section twenty two of Up One Pair of Stairs of My Book House. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Margaret Broadheaver. Up One Pair of Stairs of My Book House. Edited by Olive Beaupre Miller. The Battle of the Firefly and the Apes. A Filipino Tale. Far off across the Pacific Ocean lie the Philippine Islands, where the grass is always green, and the flowers bloom all the year, for there is no winter. The little Filipino boys and girls live in houses built high above the ground on poles, so they are always dry when the earth below is wet with rain. First the father makes a frame of bamboo for his house, and he ties it together with strong vines, but uses no nails. Then on the frame he hangs walls that are made of woven mats. He makes the roof of palm leaves and the floor of bamboo poles tied close together, so they creak and twist and slip as one walks over them. Beside these houses grow banana trees and tall coconut palms, from which the little brown children gather the fruit. When the sun goes down in the Philippine Islands, darkness comes quickly and there begin at once to glimmer here and there in among the trees and tall ferns and high up in the air the myriad little lamps of the fireflies so the filipino children have many stories of the fireflies and one of these is about the battle of the firefly and the apes one evening a firefly was on his way to visit a friend as he flew quietly along carrying his little lamp and minding his own affairs he met an ape ho ho mr firefly why do you always carry a light cried the ape i carry a light so that i can see the mosquitoes and keep out of their way said the firefly keep out of the way of the mosquitoes cried the ape you're a coward then you're afraid of the mosquitoes i am not a coward and i am not afraid of the mosquitoes said the firefly i go my way and mind my own affairs and i leave the mosquitoes alone to go their way that's why i carry a lamp but the ape insisted that the firefly was afraid, or he would not carry a light and try to avoid the mosquitoes. The next day Mr. Ape told all his ape friends that the firefly carried a lamp because he was a coward. So Mr. Ape and all his ape friends laughed and made sport of the firefly. Now the firefly soon heard what Mr. Ape had said, and how all the apes were laughing at him, so he resolved to teach them a lesson. He hurried off at once to Mr. Ape's house. Mr. Ape was asleep, but the firefly flashed his lamp straight in his face and wakened him with a start. "'Why did you tell everyone that I was a coward?' he demanded. "'Tomorrow come to the plaza, and there, in the sight of all, we will prove whether or not I am a coward.' "'Ho, ho, ho!' laughed the ape. "'So you're offering to fight with me? Well, who are you going to bring to help you?' one of your size will scarcely stand up alone against such a powerful creature as i i shall come alone said the firefly quietly then the ape seeing he could not make the firefly give up his idea in this way suddenly grew very fierce and thought to frighten him out of it well he cried i shall bring a whole company of apes i shall have a thousand at least each one as big as myself we shall see then what will happen to you if you dare to come alone so mr ape called all his ape friends together ordered each one to get a great club and meet him on the plaza at six o'clock the next evening just before six they all came in a crowd as he had commanded but they found the one small firefly already waiting mr ape drew his company up in line and put himself at their head then he fiercely gave the order to go forward against the firefly but the firefly suddenly lit on the great ape's nose. The ape who stood next him struck savagely at his little foe. The firefly darted swiftly and nimbly out of reach of his blow, so the huge club missed him altogether and fell square on the great ape's nose. Flat fell Mr. Ape to the ground. Then the firefly hurried to the second ape's nose. The third ape struck at his foe, just as the second had done, but the firefly dodged out of the way as before, and the blow fell square on the second ape's nose. Flat he also fell to the earth. Then the firefly flew on to the nose of the third ape. The story was repeated. Flat fell the ape to the ground. 
so it went on down the line each ape aiming his huge club at the firefly on his neighbor's nose missing the firefly and knocking his neighbor flat over they bowled one after another like a row of nine pins at last the firefly was left victorious over every one of his fallen foes who now can say that the firefly is afraid he cried the apes all cowered shamefaced on the ground with never a word to say but the firefly flew quietly away to mind his own affairs as before end of section twenty two recording by margaret roadheaver